All right, this is my newest piece of equipment given to me very graciously by my good friend Mark Hull, and it is a dual 3.5 floppy drive, which is hooked into my peripheral expansion box. <clears throat> now, I am having an issue with this, which I will document right now. Just so you can see, I want to document this whole process um, simply because this might be something that somebody else will come across since uh, there is an interest in 3.5 drives on the TI-99. Um, I'll go ahead and document this as a project in and of itself. So stick around, watch what's up. All right, let's take a look here. Now, when when extended basic is loaded from cartridge, it will check disk one for um, a, a load program, which it will auto load. But if there's not one there, then it'll just go to the regular extended basic screen. So when I type in, okay, there you go. See how both drives are lit up now? That happened because it's checking both drives for the load. And since there is not a load in either one, it goes to the ready screen. Well, this is problematic because it's not supposed to test drive two for that. And when the, when the second drive and the third drive are attached, we have an issue. Now I know for a fact that on this disk I have in my drive, there's a program called um, hex. It's a, uh, it's a hex, hexadecimal converter I'm writing. So, disk1.hex, enter. And it checks the drive there, but it's also checking it there. And on the screen, IO error 6. Now, like I said, I know for a fact that program's there. So, to prove my point, here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn off the TI, we're going to turn off the expansion box, and we're going to turn off these disk drives. Okay, so now we're powered down. Now, if you go to the back here, that ribbon cable running into my disk drive controller, we're going to unplug that. Okay, so now that that's unplugged, let's try this again. PEB on. TI on. Extended basic. And now it's checking my one drive, which is good. Nothing there, so my ready screen comes up. Now we'll load up the hex. Hit enter and there I get my carrot so I know it's there so we'll run it just to make sure we didn't have any problems with the load enter hex converter enter first value F second value 4 third value O fourth value F okay and that's as far as I've gotten I've got some stuff but anyway I'm just um, more concerned about the drive problem than I am about <coughs> the program so I am going to disconnect drive one while connecting drives two and three and see if they will load. So we'll do that next. Okay, disc, uh, disc one is disconnected as you can see and discs two and three are connected. So, as we test it out we will put the top back on the box. Okay, and then we'll grab our monitor, which we have discarded on the floor, and we will set the monitor back up where it belongs. Okay, PEB on. Okay, there's our startup screen. Extended basic. Okay, it's not lighting up the two or three or the one. Obviously not the one because it's disconnected. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to switch to Disk Manager 2 because I want to catalog what's on Disk 2. Disk Manager. Do Disk Commands 2. Catalog Disk. Master Disk 2. Okay. So, um, when I hit this uh, Enter key, we should see <clears throat> we should see all of the information for disk 2 pop up okay we're gonna have it displayed on the screen okay 
enter. And there they are. Every single one. My disk drive is going nuts there. This one is lit up. But, as we can see, there are a few odd characters there that are listed as programs. But for some reason, we're not able to read them properly. But, um, I am glad that this method worked. Now we just have to figure out how to make them all work together and figure out why some of my programs are messed up. Alright, well you were looking at <clears throat> the circuit board of the uh, disk drive in question here, the one we've been talking about. Got it all taken apart. Um, and here is the problem. I think we got it fixed. On these old um, on these old disk drives you have what's called a shunt pack, which is this thing right here. You see those two jumpers there? <clears throat> well, um, if you have three jumpers, then disk one acts like disk two and disk three. Here's the third jumper that we ended up pulling out and it was right here on the third one. So we pulled that out um, and we are going to try this thing out. So I just got to put the uh, jacket back on it, <clears throat> reinstall it into the box and see if we have lift off. And if so, then everything is going to be cool and I will mark hole yet again another debt of gratitude. All right, now that we've made the modification on the disk drive and reinstalled it, we're going to test this out. I haven't tested it yet, so hopefully this tests out right, or I'm going to have to shoot a second video. So, checking, not checking, that's good. So far, so good. Okay. Disk one dot test. Now on this, what should happen, if it's functioning properly, that ought to light up, and that should not light up. So, let's see what happens. Enter. Lights up, and no light. So far, so good. Now, we, uh, <clears throat> here's the other test that we did. disk 2. This should not light up, but that should. So here we go. Enter. Did not light up. Lit up. That means that we now have a functioning set of drives. Two 3 by 3.5s, thank the Lord, and one 5 and a quarter. And my hardware mod is complete. So for anybody who has an old TI floppy and you're having trouble adding other drives, you have to fix the shunt pack, which is what I did. So thank you to Mark Hole again for helping me out with this, and I am very ecstatic to note that I now have functioning external drives to back up all my stuff to. Thanks for watching.